Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. My my midwinter Dunkin' Donuts, which usually involves What's mid- a hot beverage, mm. and generally in the winter I like the French crawler. You know, the one looks like a little like a like a tractor tire. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. And it, it doesn't look like a tra- a, a crawler. Doesn't look like a tractor tire. Yes. A crawler is straight. Yeah. No. Well. Well. Yes. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, wait. Uh, great. I, I, there, what, is that what, Mike? It, is that it, Mike from Firelock over there? Uh, 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 oh, he's got the pirate hat on. It's got to be Hi Mike. Mike. Ahoy, gentlemen. Ahoy. What, uh, brings, you, vast me what brings you to Dunkin' Donuts this fine, fine evening, sir? Uh, French colors and hot drinks. Excellent choices, <laughs> both. Uh, bold choices, one might <laughs> what say. What is your favorite uh, hot beverage? Uh, my favorite hot beverage, huh? Mm, probably, um, probably anything with espresso is pretty much all right. Excellent choice. So espresso, and then of course um, the the crawler. The, the I, I like I like the French crawler myself. That's my personal favorite. Um, so you know, Mike, since we have you here, and we're enjoying this, these fine beverages and donuts, and you know, Firelock Games does make a game of amazing. Uh, not only uh, we should be clear about this. Not only really really cool, you know, miniature pirate combat. But both on land and sea, right? That's right, and, and in between too. And uh, yeah, and everything in between. Some guys could be on land whilst others are at sea. It doesn't really. It all works. That's right. Um, I thought maybe kind of fun to ask you what what kind of books. Let's talk about some naval combat books. You know, what books do we yeah. read? on the main on the main show? We're going to get all up to date yes. on what Firelock Games is doing and what we're doing with Adepticon, and it's going to be awesome. But right now, let's talk about. Where do we get our juices flowing? Yeah, we don't want to be too awesome right we, now. We could be less than awesome. Right. We, we want to keep the awesome in check. <laughs> right. So, um, so, so, Mike, why don't you kick us off here? What book do you enjoy, book or books, or plural, uh, series, do you enjoy reading that kind of gets you in the mood for uh, naval combat? So the first ones I ever read, and really the only ones that are, strictly speaking, focused on naval, would, mm-hmm. be, um, would be the uh, Alexander Kent uh, books, um, the uh, oh, stand, fill us stand in. into danger, and it's uh, it's like I believe it's actually been a while since I since I read it. I actually listened to it on Audible. Uh, that was uh, it's I believe it's like Pope, right right after the American Revolution, and it's mm. it's very much in in the line of the typical you know uh, the kind of Napoleonic War stuff like uh, like Master and Commander, you know. And right. that's uh-huh. which is the series I've been, you know, the whole Master Commander series. I keep telling myself I'm going to make some time to, to, to read it, but you should haven't, haven't quite gotten around to it yet, which is re- which really is inappropriate <laughs> considering uh, what I, you know, what I'm doing over here. So. Well, you're in a totally different historical period. You it are, makes yeah, perfect that works. sense. Yeah, but still, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's really, you need to read that from what I understand. I mean, the it movie was classic. fantastic, right? So, you well, know, that's a great, that's a, but you know, what's funny is I've not read those. So, uh, uh, was it Bolitho yeah. novels? Is that what they're called? Bolitho? Bolitho. Bolitho. Richard Bolitho. Bolitho. The guy was the main character. So oh, that sounds cool. And they're they're cool. pretty good. You know, he's got a lot of now did you read the entire series? No, I, I actually only read uh, a couple. I forgot. Oh. I know what was Stand in Danger. That's the one I could have remembered. The other one I don't remember. I don't remember the title. I know Stand in Danger. Them. That's book four according to Wikipedia. So you skipped one through three. Yeah, <laughs> went right went to right, four. Right in there. I don't know why they did that. Cool. Oh, you just dove right into the middle. I, I know there was a reason. I think it was the particular storyline that was happening yeah. in that one. So I wanted to. I don't know. I was just looking. I was actually. Um, I was. I was. Uh, I was starting to, to kind of exp- you know get the idea to start. I wanted to make a, a game. So I was trying to get some inspirational stuff to listen to. Mm-hmm. So that was a you know pre blood and play days. So but let's be was, honest. It was the cover of the book, wasn't it? You judged the book by its cover. You know, I never actually, I don't even know what the cover looks like. So, oh, all so. right. Fair. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so you read two of those. Good. Now, what's your normal? So you, you've not read, it's kind of interesting. You've not read a lot of naval comic books. What kind of books do you enjoy just to get it sort of level set? Well, 
when I read, I, I typically read uh, history stuff. Tem- typically, when it's not history, like I like to read history books. Mm-hmm. And when it's mm-hmm. my, I get my, I get like my fiction fix mm-hmm. typically from like TVs and movies and stuff for the most part. So when I read, I'm typically trying to like learn learn things, you know. Like I've got a whole yeah. bunch of. I really like reading primary source stuff. I like reading, um, you know, people who were living in completely different times right. and. Seeing their stories, that's always you don't like wasting your head full of stuff that never really happened and never will. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that's. I have very good <laughs> friends who only read nonfiction, and that's their exact argument. And they don't say it condescendingly, and they don't say it insultingly. They're just matter of factly. You know, if I'm gonna read and fill my head full of stuff, it might as well be real well, stuff. See, I think for me, it's just that I, I feel, you know, I didn't really start reading a lot until I was probably in my twenties. Maybe early twenties. Uh-huh. That's when I really, because I read, you know, I read a few books here and there in high school because you have to write and some stuff. But I, right. I did, yeah. theoretically, theoretically, exactly, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I so I kind of felt like I was behind on a lot of knowledge stuff that I was curious about. So I just started picking up stuff mm-hmm. like that, and I and I felt pretty content with learning like um, some of the nonfiction I did read or um, so, uh, was. Um, was uh, like Lord of the Rings. I read all the Lord of the Rings books. I thought I had to do that. Uh-huh. I read Treasure Island, of course. Um, that's a good choice. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of other ones, but that, you know, not, that's going off topic too much. I'm going to go back to the topic. <laughs> and, hey, does Treasure Island count as, in one of these things? There was an actual uh, I, naval yes. combat. There's not a uh, lot of naval yeah. combat in Treasure Island, but it does feature Age of Sail, so you know we'll allow it. I would say there's no naval combat. In it. No. <laughs> well, I was being generous. I, I would also say that you are our local na- uh, expert on Navy, and you haven't written, I mean, read a lot of naval yes, books. So. so we're going to take anything that we can possibly grasp and throw well, in the bin. How about that? Yours. I'm you should ask yours. the chat room, Andy, is, does, does, does Treasure Island count as a naval combat book, Andy? We'll have to ask. Um, well, Craig, why don't you start us off then with one of yours? So, so good to know, Mike. So, so as we go through this list, you can tell us what ones we have read that you might might appeal to you right. um, as well. So, Craig, why don't you pick one? We'll go round robin here. Why don't okay. you pick and, one and of them? I'm looking at your list. I'm and gonna... I've read some of these actually. Now that I'm... Yeah. yeah. See, See, I, I knew you were lying have. about this. I've only read <laughs> yeah. one book with boats in it. I don't believe you. I right. probably forgot. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start right off the bat, and I'm gonna go do a little callback sure. to the last time we had Mike right. on. And he mentioned that the uh, the gentleman that was sort of your um, uh, your uh, what would you say? Was he like a kind of like a an advisor for the for the time period, right? Benerson Little historical consultants is the official historical uh, consultant. Consultant, you know those are there's yeah, a lot of those guys running around now. They make a lot of money, right? Yeah, well, yeah I mean it's I think it's a really a glutted it occupational is. niche. Yeah. You don't want to see um, the college debt involved in that, that, in that. <laughs> right? Oh yeah, no. And he and and I believe he worked on Black Sales, yeah. right? Yeah, and he had a novel, and that novel was Fortune's Whelp. And right after uh, you were on the show, I went out and got it, and it was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah, I read, I read it that was, one, uh, too. Yeah. And that See, has, I thought you had. That legitimate naval combat, so that counts. Yeah, it <laughs> does. It does. And that's closer to your time period that you're talking about rather than the golden age of piracy, which is what most people have in their heads, right? right? Yeah, so that was that was neat for me because it was a departure. It was, I mean, you know, most of the stuff that I've read was, uh, you know, in the eighteen hundreds, that kind of thing, like you were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, um, or well, or I should say, late seventeen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds. Um, but Fortune's Whelp is really that close, like the sixteen hundreds, right? Oh, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, late 1600s, yeah, very and late 1600s. yeah, so yeah. And so different time period, uh, a lot of uh, the, the politics were, were different, it, and it ties into a lot more of what's happening in England. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I found it really interesting, and I enjoyed the, um, I enjoyed the naval combat and the, the characters. And, you know, you, it, wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be a naval combat game if there weren't a few duels right. along the way. So um, I enjoyed that a lot. Russ, that would be my example all right my early example because i i know that we overlap a lot and i we thought do. i would so give you a uh, one choice that... of first refusal on a, an overlap yeah so I'll, I'll just go ahead and do this so um patrick o'brien and um you know th- some people call it the aubrey Maturin series i call it the master and commander series which is just the name of the first book um mm-hmm. but 
Uh, it's actually, this, isn't that? I think that's the name of the one of the middle books. No, no, book number one, written in 1969, very yeah. first book, Master and Commander. Okay. Oh, it's that. that yeah, they but they called the movie that, but the movie was based yes, on the, the other movie screwed older things books. up. The movie was okay. Yeah. The movie was okay. I like the movie, but the books. The movie as a standalone story was yes, great. Yes, but it. It took like 18 different plot points it from 18 merged different a bunch books of the books and, together and kind of screwed right. up the ability to have a sequel in any meaningful way. Exactly. Um, yep. But I really enjoy these books. This is the longest series of books I've ever read. So I've read all of them, all 21. Wow, that's novels. a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot of books. I love these characters. I love the story. And for me, Patrick O'Brien really sets. So one of the things, if you were thinking of dabbling, sort of sticking your toe into the world of naval combat uh, fiction or nonfiction, what you kind of have to decide right away. And the question you want to ask yourself is how technical, you know, how into the technical aspects of sailing am I really right? Because right. Yeah. some of these books spend a lot of time and Patrick O'Brien, I think does a pretty good job of kind of being in the middle. He does get pretty technical. He gets into all the terminology and it's all very, very accurate. Um, but so, so, but if you're interested in that, um, and he does do a good job of conveying the realism of, of naval combat, which is a whole lot of waiting and then like two or three minutes of or seconds of hell, you know, mm -hmm. so it's it conveys that pretty well. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, I think you'll like it. It does. So it, I think it balances it pretty well. If you like a super technical book, um, this is general. I would call this pretty high technical. Like it does talk about a lot of the different elements of sailing. Um but I think the characters are so compelling and Matron so compelling and the dialogue so well written that even if you're not a super technical person, you can just skim past some of those sections and get right back into the characters. Um, mm -hmm. I love this series and and I would recommend it um, even, even over another one we're going to talk about later. This is my favorite, mm -hmm. favorite series of, of, of naval combat books. Mm -hmm. Craig, what, I would, how does this one rank on your list? Well, I would piggyback on to what you just said by actually, um, I would say it's not in the middle of the technical um, sort of he heaviness. I would say it's on the heavy side of the technical heaviness uh, because I, if, and, and I would say if you're dipping, if you're in the dipping your toe stage, I would actually go with Horatio Hornblower, which mm -hmm. doesn't spend a lot of time at all on the technical, the, the technicalities of sailing and focuses more on the sort of swashbuckling adventure and character development. Um, I don't know exactly how realistic a lot of the sailing is, although I think it's, I think it's close, but I find myself skipping ahead a lot in uh, the Aubrey Matron series when uh, I, I feel like I, I, there's like a couple pages of explaining the knots and how the lines yeah. go and which line does That's what. The good and, stuff. <laughs> and okay, well then there you go. No, that's right. in the middle more, for you. It's, it's way more technical than Hornblower. You're right. That's a, and that's it's a good very idea. I find those sections to be it's not like if they're mentioning a line in Hornblower, it's because it's about to be parted either by a saber or a lucky purple <laughs> right. shot. Um if they're talking about the lines in Aubrey Maturin, it's because they're in the middle of explaining to you how they're going to shift the sail plan so right. that they can get three points closer to the wind so that they can get a lead up on the ship they're chasing or a couple yes. leagues down. Wind. And so you're like, oh, God, I, I, no, they I, really do get into the like when you're chasing down a ship. Right. And so the yeah. enemy ship is technically faster than the ship you're currently in based on the current wind conditions or sea state. Right. Like, he, you know, they get he, Patrick O'Brien gets into like how you would actually catch them. Right. What you right. would actually do, where you would aim your, you know, your chase cannon to try to just nip that one part of the ship that would just be enough to slow them down so you catch them, you know, or what lucky event you're hoping to have happen. And so I find that very dramatic, but I also could recognize why some might find that to be very dull. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but you know what? If you skip those parts, great books. Yes. <laughs> they are. So, or if you like that sort of thing. So you're right. You're absolutely right, Craig. I would say Hornblower is much more of an entry level. Um, right. You know, it's swashbuckly, but it has enough to make you feel like it's real. Right. Yeah. Um, I'd say Hornblower is probably Horatio Hornblower is what we're talking about next. So why don't you quote, quote? So, Mike, have you read either uh, any of the Patrick O'Brien stuff or the Horatio Hornblower stuff? So I own, I own several, I own the first three books of both actually. And uh, okay. I have kind of like opened them up and looked through them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember reading one passage uh, or, or like a few pages on a chase that was in there in the Patrick O'Brien one. And 
I think that's really that's what really draws me into wanting to read it. Just now, it's finding time, of course. But uh, the technical stuff is cool because it's immersive to me. But that could just be because I do right. have I sail, so I have a lot of understanding. Yeah. Right. So yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As does Russ. Right. So I think I think that is definitely kind of like the, the sort of like the hook. For, for folks like you guys who know that kind of stuff, right. you're familiar with it. You get what, you know, you you easily like kind of sink your teeth into that. Whereas I have been on a sailboat twice. <laughs> I've been near a boat and, <laughs> and it was I, on the and water. I, <laughs> and I was seasick the second time. So That's not right. really, you know, I was like, oh, where are we going? Straight. Awesome. Let's do that. <laughs> I, I, I vaguely understand the concept of tacking. Thank you very much. <laughs> um. But yeah, so so um, I now I enjoy both of them, I should say, and I love the characters in both. And uh, the Horatio Hornblower, probably because I really love the old made-for-TV BBC movies. Yeah, um, I saw a few of those. Yeah, yeah. Now those are fun, but those kind of they they don't do it quite as bad as um, as the uh, as the as the Master and Commander movie, but they do kind of like conflate a bunch of stuff and 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 pump it all together but the characters uh i i like the characters i like the action and they're basically ba- they're basically contemporaneous right yeah. i mean both of those series are basically happening at the same time to the, during the napoleonic wars and immediately after yes. although i will admit that i may have gotten 12 or 13 books into the master and commander series before i petered out i just did not have the stamina to finish mm-hmm. that Whereas Hornblower is much shorter. There's a there's a lot fewer books. Uh, although there are also short stories that are really neat that kind of fit into the um, into the timeline. Mm-hmm. So if you're digging, you can uh, you can find a lot more material. There's also a whole um, there's a there's an atlas and there's a the life and times of Horatio Hornblower, almost like a resource book that was really interesting. Um, so it's it I find them both. Uh, interesting from different points of view, I think. Makes sense. Cool. Yeah. So you talk about Hornblower, Craig. In the chat room here, uh, Andy mentioned... It's blowing up! Or or Bob also, they were talking about Tom Clancy, and I think that's a good recommendation. Um, I've read all three that, that, that Andy just mentioned here. So Red October, Red Storm Rising, and Dead of Honor, they're all great because they're modern uh, naval combat, right? So or so, uh, yeah. Well, de- uh, compared that, to is the, dead of is dead of honor the one where the Japanese are arming their uh, their yeah. uh, merchant fleet with the micro technology. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking yeah, modern yeah, in terms cool. of like not yeah. age of yeah, yeah. like you know. Right. No, no, no. I get it. I well, I'm also one. I was trying to think. Is, is dead of honor an honor Harrington novel? No, no, I don't no. Think no. so. But it's uh, uh, yeah. So I it, it took a second to click and remember right. uh, for me to remember. So yeah. and what's really cool about Red I'm on board. I'm on board. Cool stuff. Well, what's really cool about Red October, particularly, is the submarine combat because that's um, there aren't. Well, I guess there are now more books about it, but at the time there weren't as many. Um, and I really like the concept of that and how that works. And again, it gets um, reasonably technical because um, Clancy's a pretty technical author too. So you get reasonably technical. So if you're interested in um, the technology around submarines or submersibles or even just general. Um, you know, I, I really like some of the like Red Storm Rising is really cool because of the whole um, sort of command and control elements that Clancy gets into his books, too. So I really enjoyed those a lot. Right. Yep. Did you read those, Craig? What'd you think of those? Um, a long time ago, uh, Tom Clancy was actually a trustee at my university and used to come once a year and uh, talk with the English department. So I, I actually met him a couple times um, and and. When I met him, I, of course, got really excited and started mm-hmm. reading lots of his books. So I would have something to say. <laughs> right. uh, and you want that, to sound, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, you'd like, not like an idiot. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. Um, and so, uh, so I read them. I read, and in, in fact, I don't remember if I put it on my list, but Hunt for Red October was at one point on my list. I think I might have. I think I might have lost. I I can't even refine you can, it. You can I've got too many screens about it. going. Just, Andy reminded you that it was on your list. That's all. Indeed, yeah, indeed. Sure. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I did read them and I enjoyed them a lot. Yeah. I thought they were good. Yeah. So here's one. So now, and I don't know if this counts, uh, Mike, so you let me know, but yeah. if, if we're doing, so one of the ones I, I included a couple on here that are, 
naval combat in that they talk about the kinds of maneuvers and things you do in naval combat, but they're not necessarily, you know, uh, strictly speaking, realistic. So, um, or they're set in a fantasy world. So one of the ones that I really enjoyed, and I was surprised how much I enjoyed this, Craig, and I think you read this series too, was um, the, uh, and I can always never pronounce this right, but it's the Temeraire series. Um, yes, yeah. His Majesty's Dragon is the first one. And so it takes place, uh, again, in the Napoleonic Wars, um, so Age of Sail, but it's an Age of Sail where dragons are real, and dragons can be trained and controlled by armies. So the uh, you know they, they have air cover now in these naval combats. So there's a ship-on-ship -ship battle, but there's a red dragon flying overhead, controlled by the British. Meanwhile, the French right. might have green dragons, uh, and then later they even go to, in some of the later books, they get over into Asia with all kinds of cool Oriental dragons. Um, and it's a really interesting idea because he's, he's not quite, I don't know, Craig, it's probably more the hornblower level of technical. Uh, I, I would say not even that. Yeah, really. but it's, it's, I mean, the addition of dragons. Is, well, no, 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 uh, but not realistic. I mean, yes, dragons, but it's, it's, it's if dragons were real, like, it's right. not like a total, it's like, it's like fantasy, but it's, it, it no, it's, it tries to set up it, a world that could be yeah, real, right. right? It's yeah, it, well, it's like turtle dove. It's like a lot of turtle doves sort of alternate. His, it's more of an alternate history, really, yes, yes. than a fantasy. And so you're talking roughly the same sort of technical level, right? Right. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So I would say it's a lot more, uh, a lot closer to the Horatio Hornblower level of technical yes. acumen. Uh, yes. So well, I I'll agree. tell you that. Oh, Andy, uh -huh. Go ahead. Oh, well, Mike, I, was, I, was, I was just gonna say that it's uh that a fire breathing dragon is definitely real bad news for a ship made out of uh, wood, <laughs> canvas, and covered in tar. Yes, and and, and Mike, I do <laughs> believe they mentioned that, Mike. If you want to like extend, you know, maybe broaden the audience for uh, Firelock Games, you can consider taking a page out of uh, His Majesty's Dragon book and just kind of like figuring out like an alternate play style with dragons and with the pirates. It'd be awesome. I would, I'd be, I would, I would, I would, I would uh, endorse that. Uh, yeah, you have to, you'd have to make it so that uh, you, you know the it's you got to give the dragons a hard time to come in, like shoot them a lot with skits to keep them at bay. Well, right? So, yeah, exactly. Imagine, you can give them I can see some. Sure. I can see some some interesting stuff with that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. Um, and and Andy mentioned um, I and I did read this book, Andy, and I loved it in the chat room here. Aeronauts Windless, uh, by uh, yes. Jim Butcher. Yep. Um, that was good. That was great, and that was another fantasy sort of steampunk sort of you know airship uh thing but had some really cool kind of technical, like he's coming up with all this um, sci-fi or, you know, fant fantastical stuff, but it's internally very consistent and creates a very getting to the technical levels makes it feel real. Right. Uh, right. Not unlike what Weber does, uh, which is a good segue, Craig, maybe you can talk a little bit about David Weber. Okay. Well, yeah, David Weber, you get, now it's interesting. I find it interesting in the honor Harrington books, because he basically has created a whole level of, of, quote unquote naval combat where it's all dictated by the technology that he's created in that world right and he has we know from having them on the show an entire group of former and current naval scholars and officers that kind of guide him and help him in developing the technology in his uh in his series in his series Right. So that you're talking about, you know, the beam weapons are really close range and that's like a knife fight and farther out you're using missiles. And and so it's um, it I I really enjoy the earlier books of his where it's kind of like all character development and, uh, and, 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 and battles. And there's not a lot of um, kind of like convoluted plot that sort of gets in the way. Right. Um. And uh, it is not at all odd that uh, Andy's favorite is the House of Steel companion book, which is actually by uh, uh, what is it? What is it? At Bu what? Bu what do they call themselves? Bu Bu six Bu nine Bu nine. Oh, I think I might have. Yeah, oh, he just beat me. Uh, but yeah, the Bu nine, which is all those guys that help him come up yep. with all the those other secondary details and stuff. But um, his later books, there's a lot more convoluted plot, and it's a lot more long-winded boardroom scenes but still when you get right down to the nitty-gritty and the battles occur it's still these great dramatic moments and as you said russ i think as most battle probably is uh, at least to those of us looking from the outside who have never experienced it 
uh, you know, hours of boredom or or nervous waiting and then moments of terrified action and then dealing with the aftermath. Right. And so I think not uh, writers who really kind of key into that and make make that sort of central to their their experience in the battles um, are, are like m- successful, I would say, more so than than uh, folks who can't capture that. Exactly. So I feel like the rest of the books on my list are kind of cheating. They're mostly sci-fi. So um, Greg, why don't you cover a couple more years since we're getting the evil eye from the, from the, from the donut. Oh, he's already getting the evil eye. Okay. But what else you got? Um, Well, uh, as far as um, water combat goes into the storm is a series. That's the first book, but it's a whole series by Taylor Anderson, which I thought was great. I know there's several books that I haven't, read i was reading them as they came out for a while and then uh you know by the time the next one came out i was on to something else or whatnot but these uh the concept is there's there's these three i think it's three uh relatively small like destroyers in world war ii and they get sucked through this wormhole into an alternative uh earth that has multiple um i mean for lack of a better term alien races but it's all on earth and um, and they're at sort of like that age of sale level of technology, but lots of different, like I said, like like wildly different cultures with these various races and whatnot. And you have these humans from Earth who have these three ships and they're like they're, they're torn. Like, what do we do? Do we like create a kingdom? What if like is there a possibility that we can get back to our own Earth? And every now and then they find remnants of other uh people from earth the destroyer men series as andy says yes that's the name of the overall series and i think it's great because not only do you have that more modern ish more contemporary battle uh sense with the with the uh with the world war ii ships but they're being matched up against these more age of sail ships um or not even yeah it's closer to the bronze age uh yeah and um and it's all about like now you've now you've got limited resources, right? And so you've only got so many shells in your holds. And what are you going to do? And where are you going to spend your uh, your capital? And so it's uh, some really good stuff. Some really nice characters. Um, so if you're looking for a kind of a more of a fantasy fantasy element aspect to it, because you've got you know it's, they're not orcs and elves and whatnot. They're actually kind of like little chinchillas and uh lizard <laughs> people but uh but it is, uh, it is interesting. Yes. they are they're basically little chinchilla people of course they are. and uh lemurs and velociraptors okay why don't we just have andy on for this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, they and that's absolutely true they are it's been a while since i've read it but he's right they're more like lemurs <laughs> and velociraptors well, lemurs uh, and chinchillas uh, are basically really the same really animal so yeah, I mean, that's what I would say. You know. <laughs> Not to split hairs, yeah. but Mike's right. You know, tomato, <laughs> tomato, potato. <laughs> and uh, so I would say that's a really good place to uh, to go to if you're looking for um, books that have a strong naval theme to them, but kind of venture away from the more historical. Right. So uh, everything else I have is sci-fi, Russ. So why don't you delve into your sci-fi list and we'll all, we can alternate oh, sure. uh, before we get kicked out. So, yeah. So we talked about Weber already. Um, I, I like, so the expanse is sort of interesting because the expanse is sort of Tom Clancy in space because it's really much more political intrigue. Uh, but there are moments of really interesting sort of uh, interest ship almost like submarine combat where they're running silent, running deep and doing kinds, of, you know, trying to sneak through uh, situations. Yeah. So I like the, um, the hyper realism inter- integrated with the, you know, the fact that it's actually sci-fi. So the expanse gets a lot of the physics in space, correct. Or at least close enough, you know, considering that it's sci-fi. Right. So I really, really enjoyed uh, the expanse for that and, and the politics yeah. as well. So I, again, I get I think the good comparison is Clancy in space. Is that the same one that's on the, that's got a TV series? Yes. So the TV series is based on uh, that series of books oh. by James S.A. Corey, which is, is again, is an amalgam of two authors names who both co-write the books. Right. right. By the way, I did remember yeah. another, another couple books that I did read that were technically naval combat and I forgot them because I 
didn't really like them that much, but it might be worth mentioning. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> they're interesting. Yeah, well, if if nothing else, uh, you, we can warn people away from yes. them. Exactly. I mean, if you're in, if, if they got a lot of romance, a lot of like, so it's a it's an author named Dudley Pope, who's another kind of. Uh, yeah, is this a kissing book? It kind of is, right? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect that because the first one's called Buccaneer. So I was like, okay, this is cool for you know we're driving to conventions across the country. I wanted to pick up some audiobooks. So I was like, that sounds like you know somebody did an actual novel about Buccaneer. So I picked it up. I got through the first one. And I, so I, I the, the first one's called Buccaneer. The second one's called Admiral. But I never quite finished the second one because it kind of lost me. It's a little bit too much into the uh, into the romance side of things, and it's uh, not as much combat and such as you would expect from a naval kind of piratey sort of book. So it does do it does yeah. kind of do some interesting narratives on um, the English taking Jamaica and stuff like that, which is a big uh -huh. a big part of our game universe. So it was interesting in that respect, right. but it didn't I don't know it didn't have the action I was hoping for. A lot of the sailing stuff, and you know what you would expect from a from like a Napoleonic kind of book series that mm. that's so typical, you know. Right. Which, yeah. Which is a good question. Why are all the like really intricate uh, technical naval sort of books always Napoleonic, right? Well, I I mean I think you've really for for Firelock and Blood and P Plunder, you've kind of hit on on a time period that you're right for some reason uh doesn't get a lot of uh a lot of focus and i think i mean it's going to be like what came first the chicken and the egg right are we all into the golden age of piracy because you know that's what's cool or is it cool because that's what everybody was focusing on when we were first introduced to it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's an interesting approach yeah i think you're right um, we should also say, Russ, at uh, Andy just super uh, got me super excited because apparently there's a new expanse book that's already. Oh out. yeah, yeah, I already got it downloaded. I, I just oh shut up. Okay, <laughs> always the last to know. Yeah. whatever. Hey, but I'm excited. Speaking of last to know, and this might help us out here. Um, so another series uh, that I, I got into from Sci-Fi, but I discovered this author, and I think he might help you out here, uh, Mike, on your question about how come most naval combat's all Age of Sail. Uh -huh. So. John Ringo um, mm. actually got his start as a sort of Tom Clancy-esque military author, right? So he's written a lot of books around um, modern military combat or conflicts. Um, but Troy Rising is a really interesting sci-fi series um, that uh, takes place where basically these, these aliens show up in our galaxy. Um, and thanks to essentially uh, New Hampshire and maple syrup. Um, we are able to uh, develop a trade good and start building up um, our own military and our own response it to alien. Turns out aliens alien. get high off of maple syrup. Yes, yeah, some aliens do. So but what's interesting about it is the very technical nature of the science involved. And they use a lot of sort of scientific, you know, modern scientific theory like Dyson spheres and other things to build out. Um, these concepts of how they might fight, which is really interesting. But because of that, I started reading some of Ringo's other stuff. Um, and he does have, for example, uh, To Sail a Darkling Sea, which is a series of books that take place in modern, uh, you know, features like assault carriers um, and things like that. So there's some really he does have a lot of other books um, in genres that kind of cross over. So, again, very Clancy. Um, and so he sort of sets that tone. So if you're interested in, in that, I would definitely check out uh, John Ringo because he's got some really interesting stuff. So this doesn't actually touch any like 1600s uh, naval. No, books. no, not no. <laughs> <laughs> but it might answer your questions about well, if you them. Want to get more modern? Get out of age of sail. Right. So. right. Okay. I, I don't want to do that. Um, I don't, well, I don't know. Maybe you do. Uh, you know, or if you want to go sci-fi, you know, it's all there someplace, Mike. That's. that's um, uh, I I like the Last Ship by William Brinkley. Yep. Uh, although it has very little to do with the TV show. Um, that's fun because there's that, that it's like a missile frigate and it's like the last ship after a nuclear war. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. But I would say uh, my last place to go for uh, uh, the, while Mike was talking about Jamaica, I started to remember scenes from a book that took place in Jamaica. And I cannot for the life of me remember what the book was, which is unfortunate because I really enjoyed the reading experience, but I, I have very, very little, I might be even making it up. Maybe there is no oh, book that you, had, made, uh, you made me remember another one that it could maybe even be the one you're thinking of. And that's yeah. uh, pirate Lavatus. 
by Michael Crichton. Mm. That takes place. Oh, yeah. That, that's not it. No? But um, but I am a big fan of Michael Crichton. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. Uh, it was not a book. It was um, He definitely got a lot of the pirate tropes in there. He tried to throw in some of the history also, which mm. is cool. So, that wasn't bad either. I forgot. I almost forgot about that one. I think I've read yeah, more. There, I, see, I, you've read a way more than you were pretending. <laughs> I, I feel like you're a shill. <laughs> you you just got you got on here under false pretenses. He did. He's, he know he reads his books. See, you can't yeah. write a game of that caliber and not read a lot of naval books. Right, exactly. So I'm going to well, end with uh, the USS Merrimack series ooh. by um, the early books are under R M Melluk and the later books are actually under Rebecca Melluk. So I don't know if she thought she might not get as many readers if people thought she was a woman or I I don't know. Uh, but they're fantastic. And I love the whole concept. Uh, Long time listeners will remember me talking about them because I, when I found them, I got all excited. I read them all. Uh, there may even be new ones because I read, like, again, that was another series I was reading as it came out for the longest time. And um, a lot of fun. The concept of it actually, um, the global politics is America basically stands alone on earth against the rest of the countries who have now like formed their own UN and the UN has a fleet and then America has a fleet and it's the only, it's the only uh, sort of independent country on earth who has their own fleet. Hmm. Um, although I think there's also like a, the, there's a Roman there's like, Oh yeah. Oh, it's all coming back to me. There's all kinds of cool stuff, <laughs> but um, there's all kinds of cool stuff. The main, the main <laughs> spaceship is called the USS uh, Merrimack, obviously. And it kind of follows the USS Merrimack on all these different missions. And it's a wildly fantastical sci-fi universe that re- they've created where the Roman empire, when it fell, didn't really fall. It kind of went underground. And so there were these, sort of shadow agents of the Roman empire scattered throughout Europe. And as Europe developed and then the United States developed and they got their fingers into pretty much everything around the world. So that when um, space travel became uh, feasible and people started colonizing planets, all of these shadow agents, like all of a sudden all revealed themselves and how much power they had. And the earth basically were like, okay, fine, you can go and uh, have your own colony and they all sort of like took off and created almost like a, a a counterweight politically to the earth now. So there's this real, really powerful Roman culture based space um, superpower that's out there. That's like c- counterweighted against the earth. They- so that's it's some really cool cultural stuff there. But at the same time, it really revolves around this one ship, the Merrimack. Do they row in space and is there a guy that beats the drum to get the top? Yep, it totally is, Ross, because that makes perfect sense. Right? <laughs> well, you said Romans in space. I'm just trying to get a visual in my head. Yep. How nope. That that's that's that it. Right? Yep. How do I work? Yep. It's all about rowing and drumming in space. <laughs> Ross, in space, no one can hear you drum. <laughs> well, it depends on the universe. Sometimes no, you have sound true. in space. That's you know? true. Um, well, excellent. Well, Mike, thank you for taking time to join us here in Dunkin' Donuts. Um, <laughs> for what it was worth. And now, now, Mike, you have you have the last word here. Of all the books we just chatted about, which one's most appealing to you that you haven't read yet? Well, first of all, I have to apologize for not having a, a very good list and being... Uh, <laughs> well, but well, now, now, was now you've got everything you thought it was. Next right, right. time, I, I, I will make the pledge to you that I will have read more books. But definitely, based to answer your question, I really right. want to get into the Aubrey Martin series. That's... Uh, yeah, there you I, go. I love the film. I mean, it sounds to me like that would be a good yeah, fit. I think you'd love good. that, Mike. Yeah, I think I got to do it. Got to make it happen. It's only it's only twenty one books, so yeah. <laughs> flash right through it on the way to Adepticon. I'll have it. Fine. I'll have it done before we meet up at Adepticon, and we can chat about it. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. Go. We'll sounds be talking perfect. about it. All right, excellent. All right, well, thank you, Mike, and we'll catch up with you on the big show here in about a week. All right, cool, guys. Right around the corner. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow.